another successful Russian launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Russia's space program is reliable and cheap, less than 2% of NASA's $15 billion budget and even barely half of India's. Since the Columbia disaster that suspended U.S. space shuttle flights, it's also firmly at the helm of manned missions. Great monuments attest to the pride the Russians take in their pioneering role in space exploration. The late Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, has achieved iconic status, and his achievements are widely held to be among the few positive legacies of Soviet rule. A short distance from Moscow lies Korolev, named after Sergei Korolev, chief designer of the early Soviet space race. Today, this small city is best known as the home of Tsup, mission control. Tsup is responsible for the Soyuz and Progress launches that now link the International Space Station to Earth, until the US shuttle flies again. The Russians are working very hard to keep the orbiting station going, while the crew are having to rough it. In 1988, the Russian shuttle Buran blasted off on its first flight. It was an unmanned test mission. Even the landing was carried out by computer. Despite this flawless maiden voyage, there were no further flights, and within five years, the whole program had been axed. The equivalent of $17 billion was spent on Buran, which means snowstorm in Russian. Five models were completed or under construction when the cash ran out in 1993. Two shuttles were given to Kazakhstan in a barter deal which allowed the Russians to continue using Baikonur, the oldest working launch site in the world. An early version of Buran now resides in Moscow's Gorky Park, a very costly amusement and sad testament uh, to a failed vision. Russians sympathize with Americans over the loss of the Columbia, but realize it's created a valuable opportunity. And the major implication for the Russian space program of the Columbia disaster is that Russia is currently in the driver's seat of the International Space Station program. Uh, it is a great responsibility, uh, which comes with the need to, uh, for Russia to find extra money to build extra spacecraft like uh, Soyuz and Progress. Secluded in woods outside Moscow is Star City, the heart of the Russian space program. For decades, it was forbidden territory for all but the chosen few. What went on behind these walls was once top secret. It's where the successors to Gagarin learned to cope with weightlessness and the stresses of launch and re-entry. Budgets are evidently tight at Star City, but managers say they don't cut back on training, including teaching both the art and science of living in orbit. This multi-million dollar mock-up aims to reproduce as accurately as possible conditions aboard the International Space Station. Staff have been busy preparing the latest crew. Russia's Yuri Malenchenko and NASA astronaut Ed Lu have had to cram in extra training because of the Columbia disaster. To reduce flights while the shuttle is out of action, only two people are going up to the station doing the work of three. Malenchenko and Lu also have to learn how to operate the Soyuz capsule. Although its design is more than 30 years old, the Russian spacecraft is currently the only way up to or down from the space station. But time has been limited, and as a result, the new crew are not as fully prepared as their trainers would like them to be. After the Columbia disaster, our task changed. And we had to complete some training in two months that would normally have been completed over eight or ten months or even a year. Because of this, naturally, we understand that there are certain limitations in areas of training for the flight engineer. 
42 years ago, when Soviet Air Force Major Gagarin became the first person in space, he roared into orbit aboard Vostok 1. Gagarin's 108-minute flight put the Soviet Union firmly in the lead in the space race. The 37-year-old pilot returned to Earth a national hero, his place in history assured. He was fated by Kremlin leader Nikita Khrushchev, and despite heavy drinking and womanizing, was viewed as the embodiment of Soviet ideals until his death in a plane crash in 1967. His legend endures in Russia today. Every year, the anniversary of Gagarin's flight is celebrated as Cosmonauts Day on April 12th. It's an opportunity for Russians to take pride in a great space-faring nation, and currently the only country putting people into space. Gagarin and the cosmonauts who came after him remain a potent reminder of the country's past as a superpower, especially after recent knocks to Russian self-esteem, such as the sinking of the nuclear submarine Kursk. Space agency officials acknowledge the importance of Gagarin's legacy. Maybe the younger generation don't remember the exaltation of the time of Yuri Gagarin's space flights. But there is no doubt that even young people feel that space research is one of Russia's priorities. And without space, Russia would be a different country. Many Russians want their country to play a bigger role in space, such as building a Yuri Gagarin space station. Veteran cosmonaut and twice hero of the Soviet Union, Pavel Popovich, says it could be done for $3.5 billion, although neither he nor his supporters have publicly stated where the money might come from. Popovich says that the Columbia disaster has given Russia the leading role in space again, and it's a position that Moscow should try to retain for the foreseeable future. Of course, it will be a year and a half, even two years, before the Americans can fly again, because they need to thoroughly investigate the causes. They have still not identified why seven people died. They need to investigate the reasons and do what was not done before. The Mir space station gave Russian cosmonauts unrivaled experience of long-term missions. It needed almost constant maintenance in the final years before it was abandoned. But the Russians say that taught them invaluable lessons on cutting costs without cutting safety. Russia is also proud of being able to maintain a manned space program for a fraction of what NASA spends. Well, this is one of the Russian mysteries, of course. Well, don't forget that uh, Russian spacecraft so use and progress the much less expensive the space than space shuttle. Uh, it is basically a 30 plus year old uh, technology which is less sophisticated uh, than the space shuttle. But uh, you can probably say now that it is in some aspect more reliable. And besides, the cost of labor in Russia is significantly less than in the United States. The International Space Station relies on the Russians to stay alive, but they can't go on indefinitely as they are. Without the U.S. shuttle, or a lot more money, the space station could be signing off for good.